Hello everyone, I'm Bra Mithra. Uh, welcome to the settlement event that takes place after the Dung Beetle Knight fight. Um, still the same year, it's just this was going to be a long episode, and I know that uh, I saw in the comments that people said the last one was long. The, the one with the antelope, the screaming antelope, was a very long video. Um, yeah, people mentioned that probably not going to want to watch two and a half hour, two hour, 45 minute video. Uh, I get that. So moving forward, maybe perhaps I will split up the videos to do Hunt Showdown, then Settlement Event. It's actually could be a really cool thing. Um, see, the feeling I had, I know that in the comment they also mentioned more videos is more views, and that's undeniable. More videos is always going to be more views, but I don't like splitting content, like splitting a video is just, it, it should all be one thing. Like, I don't know, it might just be me, but I, I felt that it should be the whole year. I should do the whole, the hunt, settlement, or the hunt, the showdown, then the settlement phase, because that is the whole episode. But I also get that it's really long, and I would like to make more videos faster. Editing takes a while, so, but I don't want to make this just feel like it's cut. So I want to make sure I do a new intro for it. Um, so maybe I'd, I'd like to respond to comments or whatever people want to do. Like I said, I saw the one comment said that I should divide it. So I'll try that. I just don't want it to feel like all I'm doing is just making two videos for the sake of making a second video. Kind of like with video game DLC. <laughs> you ever get that impression where it's just like, oh, this should have just been in the game and I don't know why this is cut out. Um, so I don't want it to feel like that. So... Leave comments. You can even advise me what you think we'll be doing next. It's actually the perfect time for it. I mean, next, we have to fight the hand next. I can't change that. It's going to happen. That's set in stone. So if you want to comment here and what you think I should do, the plan was fighting a level 2 Gorm and getting rid of Gorm Climate and then trying to build Blacksmith. And then from there, I don't know. It's kind of the game you just play one by one at a time because you never know what you're going to get. You never know... What the set, you might have to refight the same exact monster if you don't get the drop you wanted. So, um, I'm also looking to do uh, some review content as fast as I can. Um, start off with the Giggle Lion and the white box things. I'm going to start with, with things in the store, or things that are usually available in the store. Expansions are really hard. I'm going to do uh, expansion reviews, just like with this Dung Beetle Knight. I'm going to do that one right away, and Gorm right away, Flower Knight right away, because I have already made videos I can link to if people wanted to watch the review and then see how it was played out. Uh, so that's the plan. Uh, I know there might be an update. I saw yesterday that there might be an update soon on the Kickstarter, which would be great. Uh, so that's why I want to get the reviews out, because maybe the store will also update. Also, Gen Con is usually when the store does replenish. So, leave some comments. People always leave helpful comments. I saw one person said that I missed Insanity on the Flat Tooth. Thank you for that. I did. That was awesome. Um, I saw someone suggested People of the Skull. I never played People of the Skull. I mean, not suggest, I play it. <laughs> when, I, when I finish this, maybe try People of the Skull. Um, but I've never played People of the Skull. I know it's in the back of the rule book. I saw it. It looks cool. Um... I know I messed up priority targeting. Yes, I saw that, so that was also helpful. I always thought priority targeting was at the end of the monster's turn, it went away. But I guess it's, it is. It's, it's just after, as soon as he's targeted, then priority target, or as soon as anyone's targeted with priority target, then it goes away. So if they did act twice, if the monster acted twice in one turn, they could choose a second target. Um, so that was also helpful. Thank you. Again, I don't want this to just feel like it's cut content. So the settlement events... Uh, I'll try to make as much as I can out of them. <laughs> so, thank you very much. This settlement, again, I'm always, I don't want to give spoilers away, but it's a, it's a lot of operational management. Operational management simulator. Uh, that The farming event is really hard because whoever does things, they can't go anywhere afterwards. So, um, thank you so much for watching. Everyone's always so helpful and making sure I get things right, and I, I want to make sure I get things right. This game is... It's so cool, and there's so much going on. So, thank you very much, and enjoy the episode. Alright, so here we are. Settlement event. Um, 
got everything lined up here. There's a lot going on in this settlement event, mostly due to uh, actual events <laughs> from the book and stuff, more so than just crafting things. So this is going to be a big one. So we'll start with the random uh, settlement event first off. So let me shuffle these up. Oops. So we'll shuffle these, shuffle. Uh, these cards are so big and weird and hard to shuffle. Okay, so here we go. Oh, ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again? Is this the same thing? Oh, no, 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 this is different. Okay, open maw. A large stone face slowly opens its mouth. Survivors prove their bravery by running into it. Okay. Um, this doesn't say who has to brave the maw. Just says a large stone face slowly opens its mouth. Survivors prove their bravery by running into it. So, I don't think... Roll any number of d10 and add the results. So I don't, I'm not forced to do this. And judging by all the stuff we have to do, it doesn't say you have to decide now either. Um, so I think you can do this at any time during the settlement event. So if you roll any doubles, the moth snaps shut, leaving you trapped inside the darkness. You are dead and no one else may endeavor here this year. Yeah, so you can do it wherever you want. Um, so it looks like the best outcome is, hmm, dismembered leg, um, iron will and lantern sword looks like the best outcome. So, like I said, let me just look here. You know what, I think I remember doing this. Did we get this once before? And I looked through these things before. Uh, yeah, so I need a broken leg. That's not dismembered leg. So, yeah, you know what, we're not going to do this. <laughs> or if we do, I mean, I, from what I have right now, I think we'll have one Endeavor left. Free and available, but... We'll see what happens. All right, now we do glow requirement like always. For us, this is a staple. Okay, here we go. Uh, nine. Uh, we do not have storytelling. The salmon struggles against the quaking ground, linking arms to brace themselves against the storm. Nominate a survivor with zero hunt experience. They draw strength from the settlement's termination and gain plus one courage. So, uh, let me just make sure we don't have storytelling. I don't think we do. Yeah, we don't have storytelling. So, someone with zero hunt experience. Okay. Uh, so... Um, who can gain is, let's go with, um, let's go with Xander. He can gain one courage. Okay, he's another shield specialist. We're running low on shield specialists, kind of, maybe. <laughs> okay. So that's Gorm Climate. That's two down. So Gorm Climate gets added again. Open Maw, we can still decide whether or not we want to do. All right. Next uh, event. So then we have Nemesis, the hand, which we're going to do next time. Uh, now we have Hooded Knight. So let's resolve Hooded Knight. Oh, man. Hooded Knight. I uh, should have had this open. Sorry about that. Hooded Knight. Okay. If any survivor has a Twilight Sword, they duel the Knight. So Rodin has the Twilight Sword. 
So he's gonna duel the knight now. Rodin was our shield master. <laughs> so uh, he's got no proficiency in the Twilight Sword. Um, yeah, so let's see what happens. The Hooded Knight confronts the bearer of the Twilight Sword. They roll on the table. Add plus one to the result for each Twilight Sword weapon proficiency. Well, he's got none. He just didn't even really want this sword. And three. Uh, yeah, the survivor perishes quickly. Disappointed the knight leaves, never to return. As expected. Okay, Rodin's dead. Uh, fun. That was great. <laughs> oh, man. Rodin was really good. He was like, he's the guy that we found on the stone. He's been our main tank. Uh, so he's dead now. Rodin is dead. Okay, um, I think we get an Endeavor now because of Graves, right? Um, graves, Graves. Yes, so we have Graves. When Survivor dies during the settlement phase, you gain plus one Endeavor. So now we have an extra Endeavor. <sighs> okay, so that was Hooded Knight. Rodin's dead. He was killed by the Hooded Knight. Okay. Now we've got, oops, I didn't mean to close the book, because we've got yet another one. Now we have to do Hands of Heat. <laughs> Man, this settlement event, I knew it was going to be crazy. Okay, Hands of Heat now. Um, okay. Hands of Heat. If the settlement already innovated Lantern Oven, you skip this event and roll on Lantern Branding. So we're doing Lantern Branding. A feast, culminating in the ritual branding of a settlement's finest warriors uh, by the heat of an agitated lantern. Discard half the settlement's total resources. Um, round it down. Nominate a survivor and roll on the table below. So the way this reads is discard half the settlement's total resources. And then in parentheses it says including storage. Meaning that it's not only storage, but it's also these out front here. Um, so... <laughs> oh, sucks. Okay, so we got to discard half of that. And then we're going to um, nominate a survivor to roll on the table. So... Um, let's see, with Hands of Heat here, the most like, well, you're going to gain a, sp a speed, a strength, or a luck. So, um, there's no chance of death. So, do we just give Caressa the go for the chance of luck? I mean, she's going to be blinded. She'd lose one accuracy. But getting another luck stacked on Caressa would be really good. At the same time, getting another luck on Kenna, or getting another strength on Kenna would also be really good because he's already got four. Um, speed on Caressa doesn't really help either. Speed on Kenna wouldn't be too bad because. She's a spear, but can't be bringing these two out very much anymore, um, especially Kenna, because uh, we don't want her to retire. Actually, hmm, we should probably start building a new person. I mean, I know we've been bringing out Arrow quite a bit as well, but the thing with Arrow is she's also a savior, so she ages super quick too. So Caressa and Kenna are in positions where they're almost nearing retirement. Uh, Caressa's halfway. Kenna's a little bit more than halfway there. But they both do have to go out a couple more times for me to be able to get the bow master and shield or spear master. But we should really be building a new person. Um, okay, I think hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Would, who else would benefit a lot from getting... So... I think... Yeah, I think we should just do Caressa. I just hope she doesn't get speed. That's like the worst one. It's not the worst one, but... Hmm. Okay, we're going to nominate Caressa and see what happens here. Uh, man. 70% chance at not getting the right outcome. <sighs> speed would be great, though. Or, I mean, not speed. Luck would be great for her. Okay. Uh, here we go with Hands of Heat. Uh, it's 8, so that's another strength for her. Well, whatever. So she's at 5 strength now, which is crazy. Okay, she's got five strength. Okay. That's the end of Hands of Heat. Uh, now, except for the discarding of resources. <laughs> okay, now, with our resources here, we have an absolute ton of them. So, we have... Three monster bone, one skull, four great clat, uh, four great cat bones, uh, one hooked claw, two large flat tooth, three shank bones, four monster organs, one love juice, one screaming brain, one or two beef steak, one bladder, two iron, three so cyclops flies, a lonely ant, four acanthus plants, and a sword beetle. In addition to all this stuff out here. So, uh, <laughs> so what we have in storage is 34 items. So that means we're going to 34 items. And then that, what we have over here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, so we can keep 24 items. So yeah, half of 34 is 17, and then 15 rounded down is 7. Whew. So we can keep 24 items. Okay, 24 items. Here we go. Uh, okay, 24 items. Let's keep the caustic dung... Um, you know what, I don't even know if we really need the Caustic Dung. I don't think it does anything except for make the Black Harvest better. You don't need Caustic Dung to do Black Harvest. But, um, let me look real quick, because we're going to do, we're going to sow. So we need the Caustic Dung to sow. Okay, so we're going to bury two pieces of gear. So we need two Caustic Dung. I mean, I guess, you know what, we're going to keep all the dung. So, we can keep seven of the items out here. Actually, we'll just keep all of this. So, we, would I say we get 24 items? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's fifteen. Uh, we'll keep the hooked claw for 16 okay so what we're keeping from here is hooked claw um two iron so that's 18 19 Yeah, so two, uh, <laughs> we're keeping the hooked claw, hooked claw, two iron, three cyclops fly, lonely ant, 
So that's what do we say? We can keep 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so we're keeping everything out here. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, okay, that's it. That's all we can keep. <laughs> oh my gosh, we just lost so much stuff. We just lost 24, 25 items. Oh my gosh. 25 items we just lost. Um, it would be easier for you guys to see it because I'm going to make up a graphic showing what we kept and what we lost. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little dot next to the stuff we're keeping here, and then I'll remember. Okay, now I'll make up a graphic for you guys, but oh my gosh, that was just absolutely soul-crushingly devastating. Um, so now you're probably wondering why would you keep, why would you prefer to keep this stuff over the, or you're probably not wondering it, maybe you've already figured it out. This stuff is better because I need this stuff right now. I need this to innervate right now. I need this to innervate after the hand because you're not going to get any resources after fighting the hand. So that'll let us innervate again next year. Scrap's always good. Uh, this stuff is good. The stuff that comes from uh, the like the dung beetle. It's got multiple uses, which is really unique. Like this is a hide and an armor or an, and an iron. Like here, the elytra is all three. It's a bone hide or, organ. So the stuff is just much more, um, see like and there's another one, it's much more flexible to spend. So um, we'll keep this stuff because it's the other stuff has like one use. Plus uh, we're going to hunt more antelope. Spoilers. <laughs> Who would have guessed we'd be hunting more antelope. Okay. Um, so that's that um oh and i kept the hook claw because that's the uh giggle lion thing so with the giggle lion uh the hook claw knife is really good also uh lion slayer capes also good all this stuff is pretty good but uh, I need to go fight another white lion to get some stuff from it. So that's why we kept the one hook claw. And then the the vermin are just hard to get in general. So that's why I decided to prioritize keeping the vermin. Okay. Now let's innovate. So we spend one... Oh, the reason why we don't have an endeavor here is that's post-traumatic stress. The, the disorder that she got during that fight uh, with the yeah post-traumatic stress. So she has to skip next hunt. That's Arrow who got this. Uh, she can't she may not contribute or participate in any endeavors. So we don't get any endeavors from her when she's returning survivor. So That's why we're one short with her. But we do actually gain one from someone dying. So we back up the four anyway. So spending one to innovate. Let's just draw our innovation deck. Right, this is it. Yeah, this is it. So the innovation deck will shuffle and we'll draw four. I would like cooking would be good. So here we go. Partnership, Petal Spiral, Saga, Bloodletting. Okay, so it's gonna most likely be Saga between those. Here we go. Bloodletting. It's really good for curing stuff, but I don't think so. It's Petal Spiral. That's from the Flower Knight. It's good for um, gaining sword proficiency. Right now, we don't really have someone who's using swords. Partnership is bleh. So Saga is what we're going with. So everyone from now on is going to get plus two understanding, plus two courage, plus two hunt experience, which 
is important because that means they trigger age as soon as they're born. So we now have Saga added to settlement. So now all of our survivors, when they're born, are born with quite a bit of stuff. They are born now with uh, plus one accuracy, plus two strength, plus one evasion, plus two courage, plus two understanding, and plus two hunt experience. Pretty good. Okay. That's these spent. Now, um, there's basic resources right there. Okay, so these we're saving for after we fight the hand. Scrap we're just saving. One of these is considered a organ right here, the scare, or one of, uh, bone is what I needed. Yeah, it's this one. Fingernails is considered a bone. So that is, I could spend the scarab shell and the elytra, which I might do. Pretty sure we're going to do that. Um, but first let's do this. So I'll spend another Innovate to do the subterranean agriculture, which is the innovation we got for beating the Dung Beetle Knight, which lets us do Black Harvest. So... Or no. Yeah, it's Underground Sow is the name of the thing, not Black Harvest. Black Harvest is the event that's created from Underground Sow. So here we go. Underground Sow is what we will be doing. Okay, so Underground Sow. The settlement laboriously works the ground. Prepare the farm. In addition, you mean Case and Berry, which is what we're going to be doing. So first we're going to prepare the farm. You nominate one or more survivors to be farmers. A survivor cannot be a farmer if they have already endeavored elsewhere in the settlement phase. All farmers toil underground, pulling nightmare weeds and fighting uh, seed-eating insects. The farmers are exhausted by their tasks. They cannot depart or spend endeavors in the settlement phase. Roll 1d10. Add the number of farmers to the result. So, um, here's who has done something. We're going to say that uh, Thunder was the one who already innovated, or he was the one who used his endeavor to innovate. Then Lightning, she spent her endeavor to do this, to trigger Underground So, So, we need to nominate one or more survivors. Survivor cannot be a farmer if they've already endeavored elsewhere. So we need to nominate people. Okay, each time you add a farmer, you get to add a d10. Oh no, you roll a d10 and add the number of farmers to the result. Oof. Okay, so... We're looking to get a 7. <laughs> 7 or higher. So we would need to have either 7 farmers to guarantee it, so who's going to go fight the hand? Also, who's going to encase and bury? So with encase and bury is the thing we have to do next, which is nominate one or more survivors to be in ballers. Survivor cannot be in a baller if they've already endeavored elsewhere. So that means farmers can't be in ballers. And ballers, uh, and ballers are exhausted by the task. They cannot depart. For each in ballers, select one gear with the mineral keyword and spend one preserved caustic dung at strange resource. For each piece of gear selected. Okay, so then we need to Okay, so we need to set aside two in in ballers. So who's gonna be a farmer? We're gonna have Okay, let's see how many farmers we have. First, let's see, well, we have to decide who's fighting the hand. So, fighting the hand is going to be...
Hmm. Okay, we don't really have that many people. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Eight, nine, ten. Ten people here to choose from who could do stuff. So, two of them have to be in ballers. So, who is definitely not fighting the hand? Uh, definitely not fighting the hand. So, Aurora, definitely not. So, Aurora's going to be an emballer. Um, Caressa is also not fighting. She'll be an emballer. So those are the two emballers. Got that settled. So that means that leaves us with Arrow, Thunder, Lightning. So we got Arrow, Thunder, Lightning, and Victor. Fighting the hand? Or, yeah. No, not Victor. Victor's a farmer. Okay, so those two are not fighting for sure. Oh no, uh, Ken can fight the hand. Okay. Okay. So, everyone else can be a farmer. Wit can be a farmer. So we've got, who's being a farmer here? Clayton's a farmer. Wit is a farmer. Zion is a farmer. And Enri is a farmer. That's four farmers to get a seven plus. Just need to roll a three. Okay. So preparing the farm. Um... Yeah, so we just need to roll a three with four farmers. Here we go. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So I rolled a nine. <sighs> the only would have needed one farmer, but whatever. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me write this down so I can remember who is and who can't. Actually, Arrow can't go out and fight anyway because of post-traumatic stress. Okay, so who has to skip the next hunt phase now? Okay, so Clayton, uh, let's see what else happens to them. Okay, the farmers are exhausted by their tasks. They cannot depart or spend endeavors to summon phase. Okay, so Clayton, Wit, uh, Zion, and Henry were the farmers, so they can't depart. Arrow also can't depart because of post-traumatic stress. Forgot about that. It's five people who can't fight the hand. Okay, who is on the other side of Clayton? Okay, so we could choose from Victor, who's on the other side of Wit. Rodin's dead. Uh, Xander. And Hayden. Okay, Carol can't depart. So, yeah, so she can't depart. Put her to the side over there. Uh, so, in case and Barry, nominate one or more survivors to be emballers. Survivor can be an emballer if they have not already endeavored elsewhere this settlement phase. The emballer carefully constructs casing and buries gear deep within the mineral soil. The emballers are exhausted by their tasks. They cannot depart or spend in Evers anywhere else. So, for each emballer, select one gear with the mineral keyword and spend one preserved caustic dung strange resource. For each piece of gear, you roll 1d10. Okay, so we will be doing uh, the Regenerating Blade. We're going to bury that. And Izambato. Oops. You know what? There's new Zambato cards that come in the Dung Beetle Knight expansion. And I just realized the one Zambato card I was using is not it. This is the card I should have been using. So then we'll bury that. 
also. Those are the two things we will be burying. Um, so as you can see, they're both mineral, mineral, mineral. Those are the two things we'll be burying. So, for each baller, select one gear with the mineral keyword and spend one preserved cost. Ah. So we're going to spend two of these preserved caustic dung. We have now selected our, well, we selected our gear, spent the, the dung, selected the gear, spent the dung. Now we roll, or now with selecting ballers who, I guess I could send, who will fight? I still want to figure out who's going to fight the hand here. So... Uh, we'll have Bria and Chase. And Bria and Chase are the emballers. Um, no, I don't want them to be. I'm, I'm still going to go with Aurora and Caressa to be the emballers, just because you can gain plus one understanding. So, yeah, the hand's going to be rough. Okay. Uh, roll a d10. First for, first we're rolling for the Zambato here, which is, okay, this one's gonna, the Zambato's gonna be buried by Aurora. Okay, so first we'll roll for the 10. He buried the gear and he gained plus one understanding. So would I say Aurora was the one who did that? So she gains one understanding. Okay, so the Zambato is buried. Okay, now the regenerating blade will be buried by Caressa 7, which is the 5 plus. She gains one understanding. Okay, regenerating blade, Zambato. Okay, Aurora and Caressa can now also not depart. Which is fine, I wasn't ever going to use Aurora anyway, or Caressa really against the hand. Okay, so, <laughs> oh my gosh, those two are done. Okay, uh, who is now, okay, now, the gear has been expertly buried. Indicate this on the settlement storage and archive the gear. Gear may be recovered during the Black Harvest story event. Uh, so Black Harvest was added, what, four years from now on the timeline? Right, yeah. Yep. Four years from now on the timeline is Black Harvest. So that puts us the same year as... One, two, three, four, it's year 17, which is by itself for now. Okay done with all of that. Um, so these are the two things that are buried. Now, we can't endeavor with any of these other people because they were farmers and stuff. So, how do we want to spend... So, preserved caustic dung, which is just basically an organ. Okay. Um, I have... What do I have left here? So, we could spend the elytra, no, underplate fungus and the scarab shell we could spend as two hide. So, if you see here, scarab shell and underplate fungus, could spend those both as hides and spend one endeavor with someone um, to get leather. Uh, I don't know, Bria, she hasn't done anything. So we'll spend these two, spending those two, to uh, make leather, spend any amount of hide. 
and then with that we'll make the final thing we needed leather and hide for the leather bracers to complete the leather set okay so now we have one full leather set as well which is this leather armor is nice you ignore bash it's good now um this counts as an iron this is scrap which um yeah it's gonna be difficult these innovations can go back <sighs> we don't have much of anything so this is this will be saved for innovating one innovation left what could i do what could we do? I mean, I could just have a kid, I guess, be the... I mean, I could attempt to do... Oh, no, I think someone's a matchmaker. Is anybody who has not endeavored somewhere a matchmaker? Um, matchmaker. Kenna is a matchmaker. I didn't make her do anything. Or did I? Oh, no, I forget. No, I don't, I don't think I made her do anything. Anybody else a matchmaker, just in case I might have accidentally... Lightning, I said she might have endeavored. I don't think I said Kenna did anything. Because I think I said Thunder did this, and then Lightning was one to trigger Black Harvest. And this I just spent for Leather, and this would have been in front of Kenna. So yeah, Kenna can spend our last endeavor to do matchmaker. Okay, and I don't know who that will be. Um... I don't know who that will be. <laughs> it's all I can think of doing. Let me see if there's anything else I can do anywhere. I mean, I could go scrap, uh, right? Scrap scavenge. I guess, yeah, I'll go scrap scavenge instead. I'm not gonna do matchmaker, I'll scrap scavenge. Scrap scavenge with not kinda, cause she's got full courage, right? Scrap scavenge, you gain a courage. Yeah, so Scrap Scavenger could gain a Courage. She's already got max Courage. So who's someone who could actually benefit from getting a Courage now? And Trigger Bold. That's what I mean. Obviously, anybody. Chase. He's got one Survival, just in case he has to die. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, Broken Lantern. 1 through 5 spends a Survival. Uh, 7... So, got another broken lantern. So that's just scrap. Okay, good. Uh, don't even gain the courage. So, whatever. Okay, so. Okay, um, so it's looking like the people who are going to go fight the hand are not the best. Looks like it's going to be Bria. Uh, Bria or Ken. Chase, Bria, Ken, Chase, and Xander, right? I didn't do any of those. So that's who's probably going to fight the hand. So, because everyone else endeavored, I can't use them anywhere. So Bria, got to write this down to Bria, Ken. Chase and Xander will fight the hand. Uh, that's going to be rough. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's it. I'll record all this stuff down. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad watching this film at the end in the second episode. I just didn't want to have to go like another two out two and a half hour episode. I know some people were saying that it was really long, and yeah, I get that. I probably shouldn't have made the two and a half hour video, two hours forty minutes. So, um, thank you so much for all the support. Um, it's always so humbling and amazing. And I will see you in the next Lantern Year where we fight the hand. <laughs>